So we're gonna catch a striped bass today, make striped bass nugget ramen. That's the plan. We got two methods to fish. I've got this Daiwa BG 4000 and this Okuma Rockaway rod, 11 foot medium action. This can cast up to three ounces. I'm gonna have this one with bait. I'm gonna tie a mooching set up here with either herring or tray anchovy. I've got another rod out there that I'm gonna be casting lures with once I have this one soaking. Now I'm gonna set up this mooching rig like they do for salmon, except I'm gonna do a barb hook. Now I wanna show you one knot that you should really know how to tie. It'll come in handy all the time and it's really simple. So this is the perfection loop. I know I've talked about this before, but it's such an easy knot. Every fisherman should know it and it's always good to practice your knot tying. So with a tag end in your right hand, you make a loop, boom, like that. And you hold it in your left hand. Now, you do the same type of loop right over and you put it right in front of that first loop. You hold it together and you got two loops. Now with the tag end, you put it in the middle. In the middle of the two loops and you hold it all with your left hand. And now to finish it up, you reach through that back loop and pull the front loop forward and there you have a perfection loop and this won't go anywhere, and this is the time when you adjust for the size. I want it pretty small, so we're gonna keep this thing tight. I'm just gonna use the hook from my other end of the leader. Pull it tight. All right, that's our perfection loop. That's not going anywhere, and that's what we're gonna use to thread the anchovy and herring onto the, onto the line. Obviously, cut off that tag end. Here's the bait I want to thread. So I'm gonna have the hook staying right here by the head instead of staying by the tail. Just because when it's floating in the water, if the head is heavier, it has a natural tendency to try to get pushed away. So the head is gonna be the farthest point. Now with this threader, it's got this little hook there at the end. So what I'm gonna do is just put it into the anchovy and thread it along the spine. It's gonna come out the mouth, kind of like you're threading on a cable baiter. All right, there we go. With that perfection loop you just tied, hook it onto that hook of the threader and you can start pulling it through. There we go. All right, here we go. That line should be coming straight through the body, coming out the tail here. All right, now we are threaded. We're threaded on. We can leave that there. Pull this tight. There's our hook right there. Now we could do a couple half inches first before we pull it on, um, but that's basically the rig that I'm going to use today. It's kind of like that. Let that float in the water, like that. Maybe I shouldn't have put it too much and I'll do a half inch on the back here. Now for the rig itself, I've got this slider on here attached to that perfection loop with a snap swivel. There's my bait hanging around. That's looking good. That's going to float around in the water. Hopefully a striped bass picks that up. Now I've, I don't want to have this moving around because I'm going to be casting another rod so I want this to be stationary. This rod is made for casting three ounce lures but it can handle more if you're gentle with it. So I've got a five ounce weight here and this is another five ounce weight here and this one has three sides, this one has four sides. Now if you don't know the difference, let me explain real quick. So that weight is going to be attached to this slider here on this snap and I don't want it to be moving, right? So I'm going to cast out and I'm gonna reel it in just a little bit. Now this one has four sides and it's gonna pull down like that and hopefully it gets stuck in the sand and I want that, the line and the bait to be moving around but I don't want the weight to be moving. Now, if you look at this one, it's got three sides. One side is much longer than the other. So which one do you think is gonna hold better? Probably this one, right? This one's almost just like a circle. It's like getting to the point of a circle. Add another side, Add another side, it's gonna be a hexagon, and it's just gonna start rolling with the current. But this one, with three sides, it's less likely that it's gonna roll sideways, and that's what I want. I want it to dig down and hold its shape, so I'm gonna use the three-sided one. All right, gonna walk out a little bit, cast as far as I can, we're gonna let this one soak. Now, before I put it in the rod holder, I'm just gonna tighten it down a little bit so the rod has a very slight bend in it. That way I know that that triangle weight is pulling against the sand and hopefully getting stuck down there. Now I can put it in my rod holder right here. And before I leave it, I'm gonna loosen the drag just a little bit. Just so if a fish does get on, 
it can pull some line out and I can run over and get it. And it's not gonna pull my whole sand spike into the water, into the ocean. That should be good. Tighten it just a little bit more. Yeah, that should be good right there. Now on this second rod, I've got these metal jigs, 50 gram, 40 gram, 30 gram. This is called the Jiggy Jig. I just have this little product out. So I'm gonna to try to catch a striper on it. Kind of like a cast master, kind of like a Mickey Jig. It can cast far, it flutters nice. It's got two hooks that it comes with. Chrome color, just like a little anchovy. Matching the hatch, I think we can get something either on bait. Doing two anchovy imitations, except one is real. This weight has found its way into a hole. It's not moving anymore. And all I'm gonna do is cast this jig out here and there. I just want you to have a view of this rod in case it starts going off. And I'll keep looking back at it too every once in a while. I see little bites on that anchovy, it could be a crab. Now I'm also gonna look for little soft shell sand crabs. And if they're out here, that's what I'll use next. Looks like the bait got tore up. And I know I saw some small bites. It looked like it was a, a crab, but I'll tie another one on. And then I might just find some sand crabs and throw a sand crab on here, or maybe do an anchovy on here and do a sand crab on the other rod with the sliding egg sinker. I'm not quite sure yet. Look at that thing right there. Doesn't that look good? It looks so natural. Just a piece of anchovy that just washed to the bottom of the floor. How could it not get bit by a striper? It's gonna get bit by something, whether it's a striper, crab, perch, smelt, something's gonna bite it. Well, I don't have any doubt that a striper will bite that anchovy, but I think there's more of a chance that a crab will take that bait off. So I brought my net here. I might as well find some sand crabs, see if there's any soft shells and change it up. I got some, not too many softies, not many at all, but some look fresh. So I'll use the freshest looking ones. I'll let that soak. No bait. Not even gonna cast out far at all. Boom, right there. Well, here's a quick tip. If you've got to change something on your rod, you don't have anywhere to put it, you don't want to put your reel flat down in the sand or else you're gonna get sand in the spool. So another way you could do it, I don't know why more people don't do this, just put it down on the handle. Put it down on the handle. Now the reel is not in the sand, but every time I go fishing, all the time, guaranteed I could see someone just laying their rod and reel in the sand. Just don't do that. Keep it fresh, keep it clean. Reel in the sand, handle in the sand, and reel above. I found a soft shell. One soft shell, size one knot hook, one time through the back. No bait button today, but we got a barb. Right through the leg so it stays on a little better. And I found that when you're casting like this and you're retrieving it and it's moving a lot, if you use that egg sinker, there's a lot less chance that this line is gonna get wrapped up and tangled and all messed up. A lot less chance than with a slider, although that one's handling pretty well right now, but we're going hunting now. All right, man, new spot. I think we're gonna get them now. I always think we're gonna get them, but we're gonna get them.
What is this, y'all? Got something. Doesn't really feel like a smelt. Kind of, I don't know. It probably is a smelt. No, it's a perch. Decent sized perch. Hey, look at that. That's not a bad fish. Hey. <laughs> well, what do you know? Caught myself a little perch on the sand crab, baby. How about we make some perch ramen nuggets? Some, some perch nuggets with ramen. This is a barred surf perch if you didn't know. See, you can see the barred pattern coming in right here. What a pleasant surprise, like a decent sized perch for once. All right, y'all. Now what's the plan? Bonk them, bleed them, and eat them, right? Let's bonk them, bleed them, and eat them. Cool, hell yeah. Actually, I'm gonna keep them alive in my little bucket, I think. Dude, if I get a couple of these, that'd be awesome. Hold him tight so he doesn't get out of here. Oops, that'd be the worst thing, just drop him right over. All right, we're gonna see if she stays alive in here. It looks like she will. We can have fresh fish in a little bit. Bonk and bleed him, eat him. Okay. She's out, heart's still beating. Cut the gills. Let her bleed out here. All right, let's get to the cooking part, y'all. Have you ever had these instant noodles? These are the very best, or at least these are my favorite. So there's a pack of five in there. We're gonna cut that open, but first things first, gonna fillet this fish, get it in chunks so I can fry it. Now the only thing out here, look how sandy my hands are. That's the only issue is trying to avoid the sand. So I'm gonna go rinse off and I'm not going to touch anything. If I even put my hand on my waders, it's full of sand. So I'm gonna be extra cautious and conscious of no sand. I'm gonna fillet this up, but let's go wash, rinse this off first. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can even do this. I have no idea if I can. Um, we are going to keep the skin on, so I'm gonna scale it. It's going backwards with the knife. Now, nothing really special to see here. I'm just gonna fillet this thing real quick and then cut out the pin bones. Now, I haven't even gutted it yet, but I'm gonna to try to avoid that. How I'm doing that is just cutting through the pin bones. You've seen it before and you're gonna see it again right now. Cutting through the pin bones and going right over the rib cage. Okay, no sand so far. Any little bones, any pin bones, I'm gonna cut out. We don't want bones in our fried little nuggets. And anyway, it doesn't really matter if we cut out a line right here because we're gonna cut them into chunks anyway when we fry it. Now I'm gonna cut this into probably five chunks. Five little chunks. This is the stuff we're gonna fry it in here. I've used it before. Um, this, you, I threw in a little bit of salt, garlic, and pepper just for a little extra flavor. And I'm gonna just throw these guys in here. Just let them coat themselves. And do the same thing with the next one. Woo. Let's see if this is hot enough. Yes, it is. Chopsticks are bubbling. I'm gonna just plop these guys in here. Oh yeah. All right, it is hot enough. Oh, this is gonna be perfect for one person, y'all. Little fish here, some ramen here. Man, heck yeah. All right, let that cook for about 10 minutes and uh, ready to boil our noodles. You know, one pack of ramen is never enough, so we're gonna do two today. And it's hot enough where it's gonna start cooking the noodles. So I'm gonna open this pack up and throw her in there. Here's one thing of noodles right here on the top. Doing like that, that'll start cooking. And now these come with all these flavors and ingredients. You got seasoning, some fried onion, hot sauce, and I don't even know what, what this stuff is. Minyak bamboo, sambal, but we're gonna go double double it up you can get this at any Asian grocery store too so let's see let's throw these guys in up oh, don't want 
that in there. So we got two of everything. We're gonna cut the tops off. After this is done, we're gonna rinse it out. All right, noodles are just about cooked. Yes, they are. A little salty, so I'm gonna dump out the salt water. A little bit of fresh water. <laughs> rinse the salt off. Let's dump that out now. All right, and let's see if this is still too salty. Nope, that's perfect. Okay, now what you do, you just mix all these ingredients in. So we've got here the seasoning and the fried onion. I'm just gonna dump both of these in here. And we're gonna put in these oils here. So what is this white stuff? I always wondered. Minyak bamboo. What's that, y'all? Minyak bamboo. It's like an oil, you know, it's like room temperature, it's hard, but once it gets in here, it, it all melts down. Now, once you got everything in here, obviously you just mix it around. Get that oil melted. This is such perfect camping food too, especially when it's cold and windy. It keeps you nice and warm and it's, it's filling, easy to prepare. My mouth's watering already. All right, let's get these guys out. I think they're ready. Yeah, it's nice and crispy. All right, this will work. This will work just fine. Nice, 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 nice. Fish goes on. Let's get those coated with a little bit of the sauce and also get them heated up again too. Perfect. Nice. And that's what it is. Simple perch ramen. I already know it's good. I'm going to try the perch first now that it's coated in the sauce. I wish I could have got that heat a little bit higher for the perch. It is a little bit mushy, but it's not bad at all. really want to thank everyone for coming out to that street fair. It was a huge success. And, you know, it looks like there's big anticipation for it for next year. I'm really going to try to do an annual thing. Um, yeah, next year second annual Fisherman's Life Street Fair. Hmm. It's been a while since I did a rock fishing from shore video, so that's gonna be next. Uh, just, yeah, you know, thank you guys for watching, sticking with me all these years. A lot more in store to come. I'm gonna try to get back on track six videos a month. And for all you hating on my chopstick skills, hey, come on, look at that. It's not going anywhere, okay? I, I got it. It might look funny, but hey, it worked. This ramen is so good. You don't even have to have fish. You can have it alone. You can have it with an egg. You can have it with any kind of meat. It's really good. Only thing that made, probably would have made it look better is if I had actually plated it instead of eating it in my pot. <laughs> or put a little green garnish on it, but still delicious. I might fish a little bit more, and I'll see you guys next week.